Hey everyone, in this video we have a hypothesis test and it's a little bit different than the ones we've been doing. So it says listed below are systolic blood pressure measurements taken from the right and left arms of the same woman. Assume that the paired sample data is a simple random sample and that the difference have a distribution that is approximately normal. Use a 0.01 significance level. So alpha is 0.01. To test for a difference between the measurements from the two arms. So this is our first example of what's called paired data. We have a dependent sample. So in these problems, we start just like the other ones. We set up our null and our alternative hypotheses. But the key difference is the null hypothesis is always mu sub d equals zero. So let me explain what the d's are. So if you subtract these numbers, if I do 152 minus 180, if I type in 152 minus 180 into my calculator, I get negative 28. That's a D. D for difference. If I do 138 minus 173, I get negative 35, etc. So if I were to subtract each of these pairs, I would get a number. These numbers are called the D's. So this is a sample, this right arm and left arm. This is a sample. Therefore, the D's are also a sample. Samples come from populations, right? Mu sub D is the population mean of the D's, right? Because it comes from a population, that population has a mean, and that mean is called mu sub D. So we're saying it's equal to zero. That means that on average, the D's are zero. So what would that mean for the right arm and left arm? That would mean that they're the same, right? If you do, like if they're both 180 and you subtract, you get zero. So when we say the population mean of the D's is equal to zero, we're saying there's no real difference between the right arm and left arm. Some textbooks will replace this statement and they'll say no difference, okay? We want to see if there is a difference. So that's the easiest case. Whenever it says something like that, it's just always not equal to, every time. So if it says, is there a difference? Is there a change? It's just not equal to. All right, so to do it, we're going to use what's called paired in StatCrunch, okay? It's stat t paired. So you click on this little box and you click open in StatCrunch. So whenever you see the word paired in the problem, see it says paired here, paired sample data, or you have like the same woman or before and after data, it's always paired. So you click stat t and then paired. Good stuff. Always just pick the first thing and pick the second thing and then just leave it. The only difference is here they have a big D. You see it? Uh, we have a little D. No big deal. Let me do that again. You go to stat, T, and you go to paired. Okay, pick the first thing, pick the second thing, and you're good. That's it. Leave it at not equal to. Always leave it at zero here. Never change that. Click compute, and there's our test statistic and p-value. So step two is our test statistic. So that's T equals negative 4.8. 2655, and then the p-value in this case is 0 0.013. Oh, wow. So our p-value is barely bigger than alpha, right? So step four, we're going to fail to reject h sub zero, right? If the p-value is smaller, you reject. If the p-value is bigger, you fail to reject. And then step five, we would do our interpretation. We would start by saying at the 1% level of significance, just like before. Oh, we start by mentioning the significance level. Whenever you reject the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence for H1. When you fail to reject, there is not. So there is not. There is not sufficient evidence. I'll put suff evidence. to claim that there is a difference. Let me go back to the question and see what wording they used uh, for this part. Uh, to claim that, test for a difference between the measurements from the two arms. So I'll say to claim that there is a difference. All right, so the key in this problem is whenever you see paired, it's stat T paired. If it's dependent data, it's paired. And if it says test for a difference, just put not equal to. Um, okay, so it's going to be this one here, D. Yes, good stuff. The test statistic, they want two decimals, so it's going to be negative 
to seven, right? Because the five turns the six into a seven. Yes, fantastic. And the p-value, it wants three decimals. So 0 0.013. That's kind of interesting. Ours was already three decimals. Most of the time, uh, it gives us four decimals in StatCrunch. And since the p-value is greater than the significance level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim of a difference in measurements between the two arms. So that's it. There was no confidence interval and no other follow-up. So a relatively uh, short question. I hope that made sense.